Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It is Friday. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting us on our PLZ Soccer channel. In the studio with me, Alan Ruff, Barry Ferguson. Uh, both of them uh, will be reflecting on a good night for Scottish clubs in Europe. Let's start at Ibrox. What a night. Rangers <coughs> looked down and out after 67 minutes, 2-0 down. And Barry, at that point, you must have been thinking, is it going to be three or four? Yeah, it certainly looked that way, as you said, when the second goal went. And I thought up up to, obviously, Rangers scored. They dominated Braga. There, there's no doubt about that. I was really impressed with them. Technically, Peter, I thought they were, they were very good um, with a lot of handy players. So when that second goal went in, it was worrying times, but you've got to give Rangers credit once that first goal went in for Hadji, um, showed a bit of magic, um, the tables turned, Rangers looked a different team, a lot of people have been questioning mentality, but they showed that real hunger and desire and obviously that word I just mentioned, mentality, they showed that in abundance the last 25 or so minutes and I thought in the end they deserved it because I was surprised Braga uh, I, I thought I, I thought when that first goal went in for Hadji, they, they were in shock. Um, so it showed at the start of the game, maybe Rangers should have pressed them a bit higher up. But overall, I'm sure the manager will be delighted that the, the way that the, mm -hmm. the recovered for been two goals down. Yeah, and he was first to pinpoint <clears throat> the spark that Hadji provided. You know, he, he, he's got he's got fight in him. He's not just a talent, he's got fight. He wants to win. He doesn't like getting beaten. You know, it was him who... Um, Provided the magic and the spark to get us back into the game. I mean, the first goal is outstanding to cut in on your left foot, which I think is his weak one, but but I'm still not sure. Um, but it's an excellent finish, and to have the audacity and the confidence to try the second one from what is it, 30 odd yards out, we get a bit of luck. But sometimes in this game, you'd have to make your own luck, and he certainly deserved that. I love it when Stephen Gerrard <coughs> says uh, he cuts in, takes it with his left, which I think might be his weak one. Boy, he looks good off both feet. Yeah, he certainly does, and he looks a lad with a lot, a lot of con uh, confidence in his ability. You know, he's not frightened to take things on, and, and certainly a bit fortunate with his free kick. But the, the goal that sparked uh, Rangers was was very, very good. He knew exactly where he was putting it once he'd cut in. And uh, it's good for a young player like that to come in because it's often difficult, you know, to stamp your authority in a massive big club like Rangers. So he's done that. So yeah. it'll be fair chuff to him. Yeah, well, there's a couple of positives that I think are well worthy of your comment on this, Barry. And, and one of them is, you know, if the buck stops with the manager when it's not going right, then he, he has to get the praise and the plaudits because I thought he was very positive in his substitutions. Very brave. I think at 2-0 down, he's thinking, right, you know what, I need to go for it here. And the substitutions, Aribo, Greg Stewart and Camberry, they made a difference. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. He went two up top. Um, it would have been easier when uh, Barisic went off to bring Halliday on. But he went with more attacking players and I think it worked so you've got to give the manager credit but also you've got to give the players credit who come on because I think they made a difference Yeah and uh, of course uh, the entire team uh, received some <coughs> praise from the manager for the guts in fighting back and getting the win I thought Braga were, were outstanding at times tonight and um, really had some success against us but um, the ties you know, set up really well um, it's only half time We've got huge respect for the opposition we played against tonight because at times they could have hurt us even more. So um, it was an excellent game of football, but I'm really proud of my players. I 2 0 down the character um, and the effort and desire they've had to put in to turn that uh, scoreline round was, was incredible. OK, there's only one downside that's just slightly tainted a magnificent night for Rangers, and that for me is on the park, Alfredo Morelos. Yeah, disappointing. I, I think. 
If it's a meaty challenge that he has to go in or he's closing somebody down, I think people would accept that. But it's after it. It was nothing to do with the foul he, he made on the Braga player. It was his reaction to the referee. It was a bit of petulance, which, listen, I'm sure it'll be frustrating the manager, frustrating the fans, and most importantly, his teammates. Because it's a big game next Wednesday over in Braga. You need your best players, and certainly Morelos is one of Rangers' best players. So. Disappoint it. It's got to come to a stage where Peter, he's got to learn. He's got to learn. You've sometimes got to swallow it and go on with it. Well, you look at his, you know, <clears throat> we're talking about 29 goals. People were talking about will he get to 40. He's only scored one goal since Boxing Day yep. um, against Hamilton Ackies. Uh, you know, when he was out in his three game suspension, it eventually came back to haunt Rangers. Um, what would you say to him if you were his manager? Just wouldn't be happy. It's silly, silly bookings, as I said. I think if you go in, as I mentioned, if you're getting fully committed to a tackle, you might be that split second late. I think you can accept that. But when it's talking back to the ref, <laughs> it's, it must be cracking the Rangers manager up. He must be really disappointed, as I say, because it's a massive game. You've already got the four out with a, a bad calf tear. Um, I know Camberry's come in. Um, but Morelos is the mainstay of that Rangers team. As you mentioned, he scored 29 goals. I know he's not hit the form, but the reason why he's not hit the form is because of his suspensions. He's missed three games, and now he's going to miss that all-important game over in Braga next Wednesday. Do you think that could come back to haunt them? Yeah, it could, but again, I look at it as it's an opportunity for Camberry. Last night, I know I was one of the ones that was surprised that Rangers signed him, um, but it's an opportunity. I thought he came on and he'd done really well. He showed... Good enthusiasm, good energy last night. So this might be an opportunity for him to come in next Wednesday and, and show that he can be a Rangers player. <coughs> Just on that point, um, the positive from that is Rangers' performance and we'll get on to Celtic, Ravi. This has enhanced their coefficient. Yeah, it certainly has. And uh, <coughs> we need as many Scottish teams in the top <coughs> competitions as possible. I think the league benefits from it. I think the, the other teams have let Scottish football down badly in the, in the years before. So it's up to them if they get the chance when they do come in to start doing things. So suddenly as I <laughs> choke to death, um, if they can't lift themselves for St Johnston, when can they? Well, it's got to spur them on. As simple as that. With that last 25 minutes or so last night, and I'll go back to it, they showed pure grit and determination, Peter. <laughs> a real hunger and desire that's maybe been missing since they've come back off that winter break. So they've got to go in with confidence. I know people say that they had a tough night in terms of it was a, a tough game, heavy pitch, the conditions weren't ideal, but you have got to take confidence out of that last 25 minutes. Well, I've got them down for a win, Ruffy. What about you? Yeah, so far. I, I think uh, the Rangers uh, dressing room this morning would be buzzing. Players would be going about with a smile on their face and, and that will just generate onto the weekend. Uh, again, it would be team selection. You know, obviously there's a massive game next week as well. Uh, it remains to be seen what the team is that gets put out. But I still think Rangers should be too strong for St Johnson. Yeah, I'm going to ask you, Ruffy, you're part of the goalkeepers' <laughs> union. If you are Celtic, do you pull out all the stops? to get uh, Fraser Foster on a deal? Yeah, I'm sure. I would like to think at this precise moment in time, Celtic have been active in finding out what this deal is going to be. Uh, I'm sure the big man would want to stay uh, at Celtic, uh, rather go back down south. So it'll be an interesting one. Obviously, he's on massive wages down there, so <coughs> there'll have to be some kind of compromise down the road. Yeah, and of course, the reason we mentioned <laughs> Fraser Foster is, of course, a 1-1 draw for Celtic last night, mm -hmm. Barry. A game of two halves again, Celtic looked as if they could have been out of sight. I mean, Odson Edward could have had a hat-trick, but yep. suddenly the goalkeeper becomes a hero with a penalty save. Yep, G going back in the game, I watched it, Peter. I thought Celtic were excellent. They dominated the first half. Um, they caused all sorts of problems for, for Copenhagen and then they came out of the second half and they were like a different team. So I'm sure um, Lenny will be disappointed in that. But listen, it's a way <coughs> game in Europe. You come away with a point and they've got to thank the, the big goalkeeper. If, I, if I'm Celtic, I'm breaking the bank to keep him. Yeah, as far as the game overall, uh, Ruffy, they lost a, it was a, such a poor goal to lose and Cham caught on the ball. Yeah, that would be the disappointing thing for Neil Lennon. You know, the, 
he analyses things quite thoroughly and to lose a goal like that in the, the competition uh, was a bit of a setback because that meant they were back on the back foot and obviously losing Scott Brown as well you know so it was more of let's get out of here you know and, and just take what we've got yeah. and uh, they'll be hoping they can win at home Yeah I, I have a feeling you know looking at their performance though when they were <coughs> looking so assured I get the feeling that they should be more than confident of taking Copenhagen out in the in the return like at Celtic Park, Barry. Yeah, but I think Celtic have too much for them. <coughs> I don't think they'll... Listen, you've still got to respect them that you're coming up against a half-decent team, but I think Celtic at home will be too strong for them. Yeah, here's how uh, the uh, Scottish club's impressive performances uh, ranks alongside the English clubs involved in the Europa League last night. Arsenal with a good 1-0 win away at Olympiacos. Uh, Wolves emphatic <coughs> against Espanyol. Uh, there's Rangers with a win over Braga. Manchester United had a 1-1 draw with Club Bruges and Celtic going back to Celtic Park. Uh, with the disco lights on, uh, they'll feel confident that they can see off Copenhagen. Uh, and Celtic Celtic suddenly at home against Kilmarnock. This relentless pursuit of the title and, of course, to go as far in Europe, Ruffy. Um, can you see Kilmarnock derailing them? No, I can't. Uh, I still think uh, Celtic have got too much in reserve. Uh, never put on a couple of the subs last night, so I would expect them to come in. Uh, Elanoussi needs games under his belt. Scott Brown, for me, I'm sure a lot of the Celtic supporters are a wee bit anxious to find out tomorrow with the extent of that injury that he's got, you know, that uh, I think there was a massive difference when he came out of that Celtic team last night. So they'll be hoping it's not a serious one. Yeah, and uh, we're going to talk about the other matches that are taking place over the weekend. St Mirren Hearts tonight has been postponed due to the weather. Uh, but I, I think as you, you look at this fixture and it's it's one of those fixtures that I think, Barry, is, is a body blow to Hearts at not going ahead because suddenly Daniel Stendhal, who can't buy a win, mm -hmm. his next game, Easter Road, the Edinburgh Derby. It's a double whammy for me. Yeah, it is, but getting into this game tonight... <clears throat> Peter, I, I said a couple of weeks ago that I fancied Hearts to get out. I'm not so sure now. I, th I thought they would have went there tonight and struggled. I, I really do. I, I think St Mern would have beat them tonight. St Mern obviously in great confidence with that cup win at, at Fir Park. Um, so <laughs> no game tonight and then you're straight into a, an Edinburgh derby. And Hibs, Jack Ross has got Hibs playing some good stuff. So it's a real tough one. It's... It's one of the ones where he has to go next week and, and get three points, as simple as that. If he doesn't get three points, you said you're wavering and you think Hearts could be going down. If he doesn't get three points, do you think there's a decision to be made by Ann Budge on his future? Or do you just think they have to they just have to somehow head towards the championship with him? Well, I, I would imagine, Peter, they've invested a lot of money in terms of he signed a... I think it was a three-year contract and he's brought a couple of assistants with him, so Ann Budge is clearly invested in him. So to get rid of him, I think it would cost a, a right few pounds. Um, he's caught between a rock and a hard place. It's not been ideal. I mean, I look back three weeks ago or so, the Rangers' performance, I'm thinking, right, that's Hearts out of it. They're going to obviously take confidence for that. And it's been the total opposite. So it's worrying times for the Hearts supporters. Yeah, um, Ruffy, in contrast to that, Hibs, at the same time, both of them were looking for managers. <clears throat> there was a manager available, open to Hearts, open to Hibs and Jack Ross. Hibs have a man there who's now thinking about European football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's went in, he's identified the, the, the problem. Uh, back four were, were suspect. I still think he hasn't got a settled back four. That's why they're still <coughs> losing goals. But he's sorted out in the midfield. Uh, he's got a wee bit of hardness in there now. And he's also got two strikers that are scoring goals. And, and that always helps. And that's why the change has come. You know, they're, they're scoring goals, they're winning games and they're moving up the league. Yeah, well, they're taking on Livingston. They're just one point off fifth place and uh, already murmurings uh, around Easter Road that maybe Hibs could snatch a European place. This is what the manager had to say about it. Well, it helps. Um, we would. Um, my aim for a club is to make sure that we would be in contention or, or be qualifying for Europe without that assistance, if you like, because we we'd be finishing higher up the table. But certainly as a um, to have the opportunity to qualify for Europe for finishing in those positions further down is great. And that's only because they said the two Rangers and Celtic have done so well this season and, and then I think on the back of previous seasons as well. So 
it goes back to the all round general good health of the game in the country. Um, but that knock on effect to other clubs is, is obvious as well. Yeah, I tell you, it would be huge if Hibs could get themselves, you know, up into a European place as well. But it's a, it's it's the double blow. Hearts fans were looking and thinking we should have gone for him. He was at Tyne Castle, albeit as a coach in the background. Yeah, it would be a huge achievement. I mean, to see where they were before Jack <coughs> Ross came in, now they've got a, an outside chance of getting a European spot. That would be an unbelievable season for Hibs. And as you says. The Hearts fans must be looking across and thinking, why did we not try and get Jack Ross? Yeah, um, listen, it's amazing what a couple of weeks can do. This is a fantastic country at the moment for knee-jerk reactions, Ruffy. <laughs> One week we can all be as high as kites. Next minute we're calling for a manager's head on this programme. Um, but look at Derek McInnes. You know, the battle of, of all battles against Kelly to somehow... Uh, I mean, it's been, <laughs> it's been a great week for fightbacks, hasn't it? Uh, when you think about Motherwell coming also oh close against uh, St Mirren, uh, Aberdeen fighting back against Kilmarnock and Andrew Considine paid tribute to Derek McInnes and said you know, he had a real go at us at lunch before the cup tie and, and it seemed to spur them on to have that belief to fight back. Yeah, well Derek's already come out and said that uh, a team like Aberdeen should be in semi-finals and finals. He knows it's going to be now impossible to win the league. So that's the, the ambition that they've got. And I think the players are beginning to buy into that now, you know, with the results they're getting. So he'll still want to finish third as well. So it'll be an interesting season for them. Yeah, no problems against Ross County? I don't see it. I mean, as you said, three weeks ago he was getting it. <laughs> in the neck yeah. and it's just showed what a good manager he is and he's, he's obviously a motivator so Aberdeen for me to beat Ross, uh, sorry, Ross County Yeah, I was thinking about going to the Lanarkshire uh, derby and I thought to myself maybe it would be as well Ruffy just maybe going out into the front garden and pouring a pail of water over myself it's the same <laughs> effect you'll have uh, at w watching a game in mm -hmm. Scotland this weekend the, the weather conditions are not great and I, I wouldn't put any money on Motherwell I just don't know what you're getting with them at the moment. Well, Hamilton done well against them at Motherwell, so it's a tough one for me, this one. You know, it, it's just an on the day, you know, which players turn up and the conditions will be the same as we've had for the last couple of weeks. So but I'm, I'm going to stick my neck out in Motherwell here. Yeah? I don't know why, but I'm just going yeah. to go for Motherwell. Don't worry about there it. There are times when I know that you make a prediction mm -hmm. and you don't know, you know why. why, so <laughs> we're going to live with that, Barry. <laughs> Where are you going with this one? I think Mother will, will turn the corner. They've had a tough couple of weeks with results. I think a bit of quality they've got in their team will come through, so they'll win the game. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that's really good uh, news for Motherwell fans is David Turnbull's back in training. Uh, you just want that lad to hopefully recreate what he was able to do uh, and I think that could be to Motherwell's benefit all the way to the end of the season if he can start scoring goals for them. Yeah, not only Motherwell but the player as well. Uh, nobody likes to see a player going through what he's went through. Uh, it must have been a really difficult time for him to get his head around everything that was happening, the clubs that were after him, the money that was accepted. So yeah, he'll want to get back playing and let's hope he can get back to where he was because I'm sure these clubs will still be interested in him. Yeah, just a footnote, a uh, little downer um, as far as this week's concerned. Uh, you know, people are now looking and wondering whether we need to have a, a serious look and restructuring of the SFA. The whole James Keating thing is just for me the tip of the iceberg of the calamities that have gone on over the last couple of decades and of course the way we are in Scottish football at the moment. I mean, we might be climbing out of the gutter in the doldrums um, with regards to getting you know good Scottish players coming through, but some of the decisions and that one just leaves us all bemused. I, I honestly, I can't understand some of the decisions that come out of there. Certainly the James Keaton one, I've watched it three, four, five times. I was actually watching the game live, and um, how you can stop a boy playing in the, the cup final. It was a clear foul, Peter, yeah. clear foul. The only decision I had to make was it a free kick or a penalty? It was a clear foul on him. The decision that came out of there, I, I'm just, I, I'm not surprised. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people looking and thinking that uh, maybe it needs to be uh, brought up to date and quite a few of the dinosaurs let go from uh, the corridors at Hamden. It's certainly something I think will gather pace if they continue to uh, make a botched job, not only of decisions, but taking your game back to where it should be. Uh, you can give us your thoughts on all of this across our social media, uh, Twitter, our Facebook, uh, the Facebook Live Monday to Friday, and of course YouTube as well. And if you go on to our YouTube channel, you'll see 
see we've got a fantastic competition running. We will actually uh, be giving you uh, a chance to see exactly what we're talking about on our show on Monday as well. But get onto the YouTube channel, subscribe, and you'll see the competition which is running. A chance for you to go with Ruffy, with Barry, with Darren Jackson and myself to a Champions League match, Manchester City against Real Madrid. You and a friend, what a night you are going to have. I am so looking forward to it. It's going to be fantastic, Barry, isn't it? No Tom McManus. It's <laughs> only you can remember that, sadly. So don't tell him. Don't tell him. Let's just try and get away with it. I hope he's not watching it. I hope he's not. I hope he's forgotten. <laughs> don't tell him. I hope he's forgotten about the date. Anyway, what a chance for you and a pal. You can even take Tam if he's your pal, but it's a great competition and not to be missed. And I would like to say, just before we go, the podcast is out. It was uh, Tam Cowan. Alan Ruff and our special guest Mark McGee going back through his career Aberdeen, the highlight of uh, Gothenburg in defeating Real Madrid the centenary season with Celtic and a very touching and emotional tribute from Mark McGee to the late great Phil O'Donnell, it's all in there in a fabulous podcast, you can get it across all the audio platforms and you can watch it on our PLZ Soccer YouTube channel from uh, Ruffy, from Barry Ferguson and from myself Peter Martin, thank you very much for sticking with us and watching the programme Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.